There are some Democrats on Capitol Hill who are divided over President Biden's legislative agenda. The fate of the bipartisan infrastructure bill hangs in the balance. Progressive Democrats are threatening to vote against it while they seek agreement on a second larger social spending plan. But that legislation is drawing pushback from moderates. So joining us now to discuss these bills and more is South Carolina Congressman and House Majority Whip James Clyburn. Congressman, good to see you again. Thank you very much for having me back. So how will Democrats trim down the president's social spending bill and where are the negotiations right now? We'll trim it down very, very carefully uh, and with a whole lot of trepidations. The fact of the matter is, uh, when this conversation started uh, some eight months ago, uh, some people were talking about a three, oh, I'm sorry, six trillion dollar uh, reconciliation package. Uh, two or three uh, months ago, uh, we started talking about uh, 3.5 uh, trillion dollars. Now, uh, we are trying to get down uh, to two trillion. So what we're trying to do is find common ground. Uh, and we need to be very careful in doing that uh, because we have a very diverse caucus. Uh, our caucus, uh, compared to the other side, uh, is really a reflection of the country. And this country is a pretty divided country. It demonstrates that in the Senate uh, with 50-50 uh, votes. And in the House, there's only a three-vote uh, majority uh, in the uh, in the House for the Democrats. So we have to be very, uh, very uh, careful, uh, very deliberate uh, in trying to find common ground, and that's what we're doing. Now, I don't call that divided. I call that uh, consulting, uh, and in sometimes uh, a little conjoling, uh, cajoling, uh, we have to do what is necessary to get people comfortable, and that's what we're trying to do. Does President Biden play a role or have an influence in these negotiations? We've certainly seen him sort of publicly a little bit chastise some of the more moderate Democrats, but what about progressive Democrats? Many of them supported him because they were really, um, you know, fans of these large this large social spending, this transformative social spending, they're going to be giving up a lot. When you say going from 6.5 trillion, like all the way down to 2.5 trillion, that's a lot of promises not being kept. What's the nature of his relationship with the progressives um, in the caucus, and, and does he play a role in these negotiations? Well, President Biden did not promise a $6 trillion reconciliation bill. Uh, the $6 trillion reconciliation uh, discussion uh, came from Senator Sanders, uh, who happened to have been one of his opponents in the campaign. Senator Sanders is looking for ways to accommodate uh, a pathway uh, towards Medicare for all. Joe Biden, not only did he not ever uh, agree to that, he actually rejected that in the campaign. And, but Senator Sanders is a very critical part uh, of the Democratic caucus. Uh, and so the president is trying to find ways uh, to accommodate uh, all of these emotions uh, and uh, all of these uh, aspirations. And that's what he's doing. So I wouldn't uh, uh, apply uh, that number uh, to Joe Biden. And I think Joe is doing a good job uh, of doing what is necessary to get to where we need to be. Uh, Congressman, I don't know if you've seen the reporting from our colleague Omar Villafranca, who is reporting from Benton Harbor, Michigan, which is about uh, three hours away from Flint, Michigan. Uh, it's a predominantly African-American city. They are dealing now with a lead water crisis. Uh, they've been dealing it, with it for, for some years. Their tap water has high levels of lead uh, in those pipes. The proposal to President Biden's original infrastructure bill was an investment of $20 billion to address infrastructure that has been slashed uh, specifically for communities of color. That spending has now, or that proposal has been slashed to about $1 billion uh, due to a compromise with Republicans. So, so what's your message to people who are hoping that the federal government will be able to alleviate their suffering? Because clearly even their local governor, uh, government, the, uh, Omar interviewed the mayor, he is waiting on federal funds for relief to be able to fix those pipes. So what's your message to those folks? 
My message is very clear. Took a hard look at who is doing this. I've been to Flint more than once. Uh, I know what it is. In my congressional district, uh, in the little town of Summerton, we have a similar crisis uh, when it comes to water uh, and uh, what I call safe drinking water. Uh, and, and so that's a big, big problem. And it's an infrastructure problem because these lead pipes we got to get rid of. Now, I saw the number, about $30 million, they say, there uh, is needed to get rid of the lead pipes. That's $30 million that ought to be uh, appropriated right away. But I also saw uh, that around 6 or $7 uh, million was been appropriated way back in the Obama days. And they are just now getting the money. So what happened between now and Obama? We know what happened. The Trump administration happened. And so we've got to let people know that what has happened in Benton Harbor is because of the neglect of the Republicans for the last four years. And now we see uh, a compromise with Republicans cutting that down to $1 uh, billion when it should be $20 billion. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to do a better job of getting the people to understand that to get the 51 votes uh, and you got only 50 on your side, you've got to do something. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, water in terms of infrastructure, that's one area that needs attention. Um, another area that you've really focused on is pushing for legislation to make high speed Internet accessible and affordable across the country. Um, funding to help bridge the digital divide is included in President uh, Biden's infrastructure plan. But, you know, people want to know what a timeline looks like for this vote. It has bipartisan support. How long will they have to wait? Well, as long as it takes. And I mean that. Look at the infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It has $65 billion in it for uh, high-speed uh, broadband, $65 billion. However, all the experts have told us, and it's in my bill, uh, the accessible, affordable broadband for all bill, carried in the Senate by Amy Klobuchar, that bill calls for $95 uh, billion because that's what is needed. So when you only do two-thirds of what is needed, then the question is whether or not we'll have provisions in this reconciliation uh, bill that will allow communities uh, to build themselves out 100%. If you only give two-thirds of that money to some states that I know, then it means somebody is going to get shortchanged. So who will that be? Let's look at history. When you only got two-thirds of the money that you need, to build out 100%, which communities get to two thirds and which get left, which one third gets left out? That's what we're dealing with here, and I and I'm trying to keep focus on that. Uh, we're going to be fine in South Carolina. We've been doing a lot in South Carolina uh, to get us that one, uh, that two thirds uh, is all we need in South Carolina in order to do what's necessary. But there are a lot of states that that two-thirds will be all that they get. And we need uh, three-thirds. Uh, Congressman, let me switch uh, topics here and talk about the coronavirus. You had the opportunity to question the Trump administration's coronavirus response coordinator, Dr. Deborah Burks, earlier this week. Uh, what did you learn from her testimony? Well, uh, we didn't, uh, the staff uh, talked with her, and I know the Republicans uh, injected the, at least one Republican injected himself into that discussion. Uh, I have not uh, sat down with the staff to see exactly what we learned, uh, but that was a meeting between her uh, and the staff that we requested. She agreed to, and I am very thankful that she did. Now we are uh, going to put together uh, the results, and then we will make them public uh, at the proper time. Uh, but I have not sat down with the staff to see exactly what we gleaned from that. What I have done, however, is I've sent out a letter uh, to three companies that got a lot of money that they should not have gotten, in our opinion, uh, around $90 million that went out to people uh, dealing uh, with this pandemic who were not qualified to get the money. And to the Trump administration's credit, 
uh, when we raised this issue, they took back 40 million from one uh, company, but they still left about uh, 35, or, or a little over 40, uh, 45 billion out of million uh, with other companies uh, that we think ought to be returned as well. And we've turned that over to the Inspector General in hopes uh, that the Inspector General will do uh, what is necessary to recover that money. So yes, we're working on many fronts uh, and we're gonna get to where we need to be. Uh, and hopefully the Republicans will stop trying to throw up roadblocks, which is why they got involved uh, in Ms. Burke's discussion, uh, which they have the right to do, but which I stayed out of because I also have a right uh, to do what's necessary uh, to be fair uh, to people like uh, Ms. Burt. Well, Congressman Clyburn, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me.